Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for more Sailor Friends next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Ami Mizuno, Sailor Mercury in Dungeons & Dragons. For those of you not in the loop, the Sailor Moon and Sailor Mars videos I made were taken down by the animation company. So to avoid that, I'm using footage from the Sailor Moon video game this time. It looks a lot like Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep for some reason. Weird. Water. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need water. I guess every character we build needs water now that I think of it. So do you. Get some water and take a sip of water every time I say water, okay? We're gonna get you nice and hydrated. Next, we need to change states, and I don't mean going to college somewhere else. I mean, we're gonna make the water hot enough to vaporize and chill enough to freeze. Finally, we need to make sure that we can transform into a cool outfit that will maybe stop aliens from killing us. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimum in mind. Intelligence will be number one. While there are a few smart ones in the Sailor Scout, Ami is the definitive smart one. Wisdom after that, if you want to be a doctor, you need medicine, which is a wisdom skill in D&D. Dexterity next, the Sailor outfits are not heavy metal. You protect yourself with speed and watery shields. Charisma after that, your friends like you and eventually help you gain some confidence. Constitution is a bit low. Ideally, you just won't get hit, so you won't have to worry about low HP or low concentration. We'll dump strength, though. You're an academic, not a pugilist like Jupiter. Mercury is the reincarnation of a sailor guardian, but she reincarnated as a human. That'll give you a feat like Warcaster, giving you advantage on concentration saving throws, the ability to cast spells for opportunity attacks as long as they only take an action to cast and only target one creature. Bump your dexterity and your intelligence with your two free points, grab acrobatics for your skill of choice, and build your own background for medicine and perception. Call it the nerd background. The nerdiest class is wizard, or maybe artificer, but artificers can build mech suits, and wizards it's just like, read, nerd. But you get two skills from the nerd list. Like History and Arcana, those can be pretty useful when a bunch of aliens are running around town. You can get even more bookish with spells and cantrips, like Identify to tell you what a magical item is and how many charges it has left. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and the type of magic causing them. Put your goggles on and figure out what the heck is happening. Lots of transmutation, ladies turning into cars and stuff. Disguise Self lets you change your appearance for an hour, including your clothing so you can get into some more stylish battle duds. Mage Armor gives you some practice battle buds, setting your AC to 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. Shield will bring up a little bubble shield, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction, which would be 20 with mage armor, protecting your delicate 6 total HP at this level. Fog cloud will help you run away, good idea, with a 20 foot radius of heavily obscuring fog to hide in or to make people think you're hiding in it while you run away. For your cantrips, frostbite forces a constitution saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 1d6 cold damage and have disadvantage on their next weapon attack, giving you a little consistent offensive option. Message lets you whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you, and they can whisper back for a little sailor communicator. Shape water lets you do some fun flavor with water, shaping it, changing its color, freezing it, or changing its direction it's flowing in. Is it regularly practical? Nah, but it's fun. Arcane recovery is practical, though, letting you recover spell slots on a short rest equal to half your wizard level. Just take a nice cool drink of water, in the game and at home. Second level wizards can choose a school. You want to go to medical school, but that isn't an option. Peace was never an option, so you became a war mage. To use your tactical wit to add your intelligence modifier to your initiative rolls, you need to go first if your first action is always applying mage armor. You also get arcane deflection, letting you add 2 to your AC or plus 4 to a saving throw as a reaction. After you do that, you can only cast cantrips until the end of your next turn, but frostbite is actually pretty good, and not dying is even better with a little aquatic shield. For some more aquatic offense, there isn't really water damage in D&D, but magic missile is force, and that's kind of similar, I think. You shoot 3 darts that deal 1d4 plus 1 force damage each and automatically hit as you steer your water to make sure it hits. Ice Knife is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 piercing damage, then forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures within 5 feet of where it landed. Dealing 2d6 cold damage to those that fail, it's a little more stabby than Ami's general MO, but the cold damage is good. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Old Person paralyzes a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for a little ice to freeze people in place, lasting a minute depending on your concentration. But now there's a more 
literal way to use a second level slot to freeze someone in place with Rhyme's Binding Ice, forcing a constitution saving throw on a creature and dealing 3d8 cold damage on a failed save and setting their speed to zero for a minute or until another creature uses their action to break them out. On a success, they take half damage and they aren't stopped. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement, bump your intelligence score up for better spells. We need spells. Ami never uses a claymore. You also get more spells, like Snillock Snowball Swarm, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a five foot radius sphere, dealing 3d6 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's a little less damage and doesn't have the restriction of rhymes, but it's a slightly larger area, very slightly. Shatter forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, for the crashing of a thousand waves. Fifth level wizards can actually crash some waves with third level spells like Tidal Wave, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot long, 10 foot wide, 10 foot tall area. Failing that, they take 4d8 bludgeoning damage and they're not prone, have damage and no prone if they succeed. But maybe you're more into making a literal water shield with a wall of water. That'll make a wall of water that's 30 feet long and 10 feet high, or a ringed wall with a 20 foot height and a 20 foot diameter. That makes an area difficult to rain, gives ranged attacks through the water, disadvantage, and halves the damage of fire that moves through it. You can also freeze sections of it with a cold damage spell. It's kind of weird, but it can be fun if you find the right place to use it. Six level war wizards get power surge, letting you add extra force damage to a spell you cast equal to half your wizard level. You start with one surge at the start of a long rest, but can get more when you shut down spells with counterspell. Oh, counterspell is a spell that shuts down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level. Shield is a water shield for attacks. Counterspell is a water shield for spells that also apparently makes your water hit harder the next time you use it. Pretty neat. For your other spell at this level, Sleet Storm lets you create a 40 foot radius, 20 foot high cylinder of snow and ice, making the area difficult to rain, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside and knocking them prone if they fail, and it forces concentration saving throws on casters in the area. It's a whole bunch of bad news for the weirdo aliens attacking her. Seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells like Watery Sphere, creating a five foot radius sphere of floating water, forcing a strength saving throw on creatures of large or smaller, failing that they're restrained inside until they can make the save on their turn. You can fit four medium or one large creature and keep moving them 30 feet as your action on their turn. Just mop up the smaller enemies and push them somewhere else. It's the Patrick Star strategy. Obviously, it's brilliant. Otiluk's Resilience Sphere puts a creature inside and stops all magic and attacks from coming in or going out. It can be a great defensive option to protect yourself, or you could trap an enemy in a ball of ice, though an unwilling creature can make a dexterity saving throw to jump out at the last minute. Eight level wizards get another ability score improvement, cap off your intelligence to be the smartest in the bunch, at least until Uranus and Neptune get there. Even then, you're still the smartest, but at least it becomes a competition. For this level spell, Ice Storm creates a cylinder that's 40 feet high with a 20 foot radius, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside. Failing that, they take 4d6 cold and 2d8 bludgeoning damage, half as much on a success, and the area becomes difficult to rain until the end of your next turn. It's like Sleet Storm, but faster and with the damage. Control Water lets you control water in a 100 foot cube, and I'm gonna be honest, there are so many things you can do. Flood it, part it, change the flow, make a whirlpool. Each of them is really long and complicated, but if you find yourself in an aquatic campaign, these are amazing options. Not so much in a desert. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Hold monster is like hold person without the humanoid restriction. Maybe some of the aliens would count as humanoids, but most are gonna be aberrations or something weird. Cone of Cold is a big old ice storm, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot cone, dealing 8d8 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's really nice to finally have two easy spells to explain. Ami does water and water is long and funky in D&D. 10th level war mages get durable magic, adding two to your AC and saving throws while you concentrate on a spell, so if you're watery sphering, you'll also not get hit as often. Skill empowerment is another great concentration option, giving a creature expertise in a skill they're proficient with for up to an hour depending on your concentration. That would double your proficiency bonus on something like arcana or history or medicine, while also just bumping up your AC and all your saving throws. Bumping a knowledge skill before using the legend lore spell is also a very good strategy, since that spell lets you know more about a person, place, or thing of legendary renown. The more you already know about it with a history or arcana check, the more information you get, so using these in tandem can be quite good. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells. True seeing will give you some sailor goggles for 120 feet of true sight, also showing you secret doors and into the ethereal plane. Any suspiciously successful new businesses? Probably aliens in disguise. Contingency lets you make sure that you're always prepared, casting a 5th level spell at the same time that will activate on yourself sometime in the next 10 days, when a condition you declare happens. Going to bed with extra slots? Make sure 
mage armor is going to pop when you roll initiative, or skill empowerment the first time you need to make a history check. Lots of great options. 12 level wizards get an ability score improvement. If you want to be a doctor, we need to get your wisdom higher, so let's start investing there. For this level spell, ice is nice. So grab investiture of ice to become immune to cold damage, resistant to fire damage, make 10 feet of difficult terrain surrounding you that you can ignore, and use your action to force a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cone, dealing 4d6 cold damage and having the movement speed of those who fail, half damage and no slowing if they succeed. It's a sweet suite of buffs that's really cool. Oh, and since it's concentration, it also raises your AC and saving throws. Wall of Ice also raises your AC and saving throws, and it creates a big wall of ice. A 10 foot radius hemispherical dome or 10 10 by 10 foot panels, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, dealing 10d6 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. While the walls are up, they have 12 AC and 30 HP. Even when a section is destroyed, it forces a constitution saving throw on creatures who move through it, dealing 5d6 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. And now we're finally done with the big, long, complicated spells since there's really nothing icy or watery beyond the sixth level. And that means we can jump over to Monk, which you know I love doing, to grab some more watery options. Not at the first level though. That's where you get on armor defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor, which is the same as mage armor for you at this point, and we'll save that first level spell slot. I know you are really worried about that first level spell slot. You also get martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier, using your dexterity modifier, and you can make one as a bonus action after you make one with your action. Cantrips are probably going to be better for you. Unarmored defense is the main buff at this level. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool sailor stuff like Step of the Wind, letting you dash or disengage as a bonus action with double jump distance to make up for your lower strength score. Shoot some water at the ground, and you can really scoot into the air. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, pairing pretty well with your abjurative abilities from Wizard to keep the damage off your shallow health pool. Water. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks as a bonus action instead of one. The other options are definitely more army and more helpful to your build as a character. You don't need any key points for unarmored movement, thankfully, making you faster when you're not wearing armor and giving you another reason to keep it light. Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition. Four elements monks get some exclusive water options, like Water Whip, letting you spend two key points to force a dexterity saving throw on a creature within 30 feet of you, dealing three d10 bludgeoning damage if they fail, and an additional d10 for every key point you spend. They're also knocked prone or pulled to 25 feet closer to you, but that's only if they don't succeed. They also only take half damage if they succeed. You also get deflect missiles, letting you use your reaction to reduce damage from incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level, even throwing it back by spending a key point if you've dropped the damage to zero. I would just use this to keep the damage off, save your key points for water whips. Four level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. Just shoot a little pool of water by the ground to land in. Nobody breaks their legs in the deep end. You also get another ability score improvement, bump your wisdom again for better water whips and better AC, as well as more medicine skill for your post sailor life. Kind of stinks when you're working so young. Then going to school to get a degree to work more? When do you just get to chill out? Never? Sad, but relatable. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, but even with that and the d6 martial arts die, casting's gonna be better. The only reason to use it would be for stunning strike, letting you spend a key point when you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack to force a constitution saving throw on them, feeling that they're stunned until the end of your next turn. If this was a first level wizard spell, it would be considered busted, but it's a monk ability, so it's bad, I guess. Sixth level monks get key empowered strikes, make your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances. If you can control water magically and water does magical bludgeoning damage, it would follow that your unarmed attacks are now water right? You can also choose another elemental discipline. Shake the Flowing River lets you control some water in a 30-foot square, turning it into ice, raising it, or lowering it, moving it anywhere, but not dealing any damage with that. So it's a good flavor option if you don't want to drop a 4th level spell on control water for non-violent means. 7th level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage from failed dexterity saves and no damage from successful ones. Your dexterity save isn't actually all that great at plus 4 if you're concentrating on a spell, but this will help make you a little more fireproof. You also get stillness of mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening as an action on your turn, keeping you calm, cool, and collected. You need steady fingers as a doctor. Our capstone is the 8th level of monk for one last ability score improvement. Cap off your wisdom for maximum monk saves, better AC, and high enough medicine to get into any school you want. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a master of position control, moving enemies around and locking them down. You're also great at shutting down damage with abjuration spells and monk abilities to keep the damage off. Finally, you bring the knowledge with spells 
rolls to get information and a capped off wisdom and intelligence modifier to get the lore without spending slots. For weaknesses, you're fragile, with less than 100 HP, meaning that if you don't keep the damage off, you're gonna die. That low constitution is also an issue for concentration, meaning that you could be dropping spells left and right. Finally, you have a lot of concentration spells and can only have one up at a time, but that just means you have to be fluid, like water. Get creative, get smart, and make moves to keep yourself and your friends safe. Just watch out for big damage. It wouldn't be great if you were barreled over. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.